Do you sometimes hear about how much smaller toys have gotten? Well, here's a 90s basic class figure, and here's our equivalent relatively recently. And I kind of like it. War for Cybertron Rat Trap serves as an interesting challenge for the brothers of Haz. Mecha collector quality figure that's still within budgetary range. And granted, there are other figures in this price range outside of core class, but they either don't actually transform, are disappointing one-step changers, or whatever the hell these are. But core class figures are interesting. They're about the size of classic Star Wars figures at about three and three quarter inches, but are still highly poseable and actually resemble the characters. They're so good that of course they've reportedly been canceled. Now, this isn't confirmed by Hasbro themselves at the time of writing, but it's not looking good. And it's for a number of speculated reasons. Some say it's the choice of characters, like, okay, a Bumblebee this size makes sense, but Optimus Prime? There were some quality control issues apparently sometimes. Most believably to me is Hasbro's good old fashioned shipping issues, causing not a lot of places to get desirable figures. Good to see old habits don't die hard. Ain't that right, Speedier Cosmos and Hot Rod? And it's a shame because I think Core could have been a great entry point into Transformers collecting, as well as for kids. They're so delightfully simple, but still are reasonable quality. It's astonishing to me how these things are $5 more than an authentic figure, and yet have 10 times the quality. I feel like these things could have had a great home in places like CVS or Walgreens as something little Billy could see and bring home and have fun with. And Rat Trap here is one of the best in the size class. And it makes sense to make Rat Trap this size because, well, he's a rat, a rodent, vermin. He's a small fella, even in the show. Maybe not as small as this figure, but it honestly works for him to be this scale. It's an almost perfect likeness to his cartoon self, including his big old shell forming backpack that thankfully doesn't get in the way of articulation. Though it does look like he skinned a rat and is wearing its flesh. Anyone ever seen Freddy Got Fingered? At least this somewhat disturbing backpack has a nice notch on the back to store his gun, always appreciated. And even when he's this tiny, look at the detail level we have. His colors are accurate, there's texturing for his rat body and the head sculpt, and oh my god, the head sculpt. It's like they shrank at the Lux figure. All the details are here, his eyes, his little buck teeth, his exposed brain from when he was a mentally handicapped lab experiment. Here with full leg, arm, shoulder, and even head rotation. You can have him pose however you'd like. You could have him in cool action poses, have him be a hardened soldier, have him doing moderately suggestive yoga. Have him hide inside of a character's hat to save a dying French restaurant. And even recreate fan fictions from that side of the Transformers fandom. There's also articulation in the knee area allowing for the transformation to work. And similarly, there's a hinge for his arm, which when it comes out just looks not great. Also apparently, this is version 2.0 of this mold, which is supposed to have the fixed joints where the arms don't come out as easily, which... Yeah, that's not correct. Should also note, there's another version sold in Japan under the Beast Wars Again line with more metallic paint for the body, which is kind of annoying as this means for certain robots, they look a lot more cartoon accurate and there's even a version of the Rhinox figure where he's not that god awful pea green, you just have to pay 60 bucks for him along with shipping which- No, I'm not angry! Can't you tell? Ah well, appreciate what you got, not what you could have had. The transformation has a bit more going on than your average shell former, which is nice, with lots of tucking and locking for the arms and legs. It's not the most involved, but I do kind of like how snugly packed everything is. It is kind of fun to unfold this rat. And it's impressive that the final result is decently convincing for something so small. An adorably emptied expression rat with lots of paneling going on, which unfortunate, but I understand had to be done for the sake of the transformation. Also, unfortunate is the arms had to go somewhere, and as a result, Rat Trap here has, uh, realistic rat testicles. There's no articulation as well, save for the hind legs, sadly. You can kind of tilt the head out, but it exposes the head. You're not gonna get an iconic rat sniffing about pose. Definitely an area where the deluxe Thrilling 30 figure, the Thrilling 30 figure improves on. But keep in mind, that's a deluxe figure from years ago. And the fact that this is even comparable, I think, is really impressive. The fact for a budget figure we get this much transformation, this much personality, and this much value is really impressive. 
On setting out to make the best budget figure possible, it's a perfect 5 out of 5. But I go on an overall scale, so I'm giving him 4.5 cheese showers out of 5. I'm really sad Core is reportedly dying. It seems like stuff like this could have been a really good entry point. And there are a number of figures in this range that show the potential, and maybe I'll look at those another day. But if this is truly the end, well, at least we got something good. Somewhere out there. Oh, calm down, guys. We, we'll we'll have a game of skeleton. I'm afraid of skeleton. <laughs> but whatever. What skeleton? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fucking transform this thing. I'm quoting it all day. Uh, it's like, oh, we're, we're about to get to the best part. You, I am all-star Nina BB-8. You are just Alexander Trevkia. Why you? <laughs> you are so bad you should play for Latvia. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>